from Wingate University and WUTV. This is Wingate Today. Hello and welcome to Wingate Today. I'm Jeff Atkinson. July came in with a bang, literally. The first day of July, the university and the town of Wingate and surrounding areas found themselves in the path of an incredible summer thunderstorm, one that damaged buildings and downed trees, caused tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage, and completely changed the look of one of Wingate's marquee sites. Not a sound you're accustomed to hearing on the Wingate University campus in the summer. But the cleanup became job one after a severe thunderstorm appeared out of nowhere and set its sights in the quad. Sunday night, July 1st, about 7.30 in the evening. Wingate President Jerry McGee happened to be working in his office at the time. Well, it hurts your heart, and uh, this is such an important part of our campus, the academic quad, and I, uh, it's hard to tell, but I would imagine this tree was probably here in 1896 when the school was founded. Six of the 100-plus-year-old trees that kept the quad cool came down in the 20-minute storm, one just barely missing the historic Eford building, where the university archives are now housed. The back side of the Ethel K. Smith Library was damaged. A giant oak tree damaged the roof and broke out at least one window. Amy Odom, director of the library, was out of town at the time, but kept up through cell phone pictures and texts. I was just horrified because I feel like this building really is my home. I've been on this campus for more than 20 years. Um, so I was just very concerned about the facility, the campus. I was just relieved that in all those messages, everybody was telling me that the people were fine. And the people pulled together, volunteers, faculty, staff, members of the community, and work crews managed to complete a week's worth of cleanup in two days. Across campus, 30 trees were knocked down, the roofs of six university buildings were damaged, along with a summer camp worker's car. In the town of Wingate, high winds tore off this service station awning at the Exxon College Mart on US Highway 74. I was kind of worried, oh yeah, it scared me a little bit. I can't lie, it did scare me a little bit. But the most dramatic damage was on the academic quadrangle, where the university holds its commencement each May. Now, with a good bit of the tree canopy missing, a little bit of history is now gone. The quad commencement is a, a great tradition on our campus. We'll still go on with that tradition, I'm sure, but it'll just look a little bit different than it has in the past. University officials tell us trees will be planted in the quad to replace those lost. The storm did an estimated $150,000 worth of damage to campus. Even before the damage, it's been a busy summer of construction at Wingate University. Some are calling it a hard hat summer, and it's not hard to see why. It's our cover story. This has really come together quickly. It has. It's an accelerated project for us. When most people are kicking back and taking vacation, not Scott Hunsucker and his team. They're in the trenches. We know that the summer, you know, May through August is our busy time, and we've got to be prepared most of our folks don't take vacation during the summer when you would expect them to. Uh, you know, they, they know to pitch in and, and get the job done. And this summer is one of their busiest. Constructing a three-story, 300-bed dorm is just one of the projects on Scott Hunsucker's watch right now. The new residence hall for freshman men, which replaces an outdated dorm that will be renovated next year, comes complete with 22 miles of electric wiring. 12 washer-dryer hookups on each floor, quadruple what the men have now, and the latest security technology. The place can be locked down in an instant. The vision of what's going to happen here is going to be a great, a great plan. Assistant VP for Business Operations, it's Hunsucker who's tasked with keeping up the campus and increasingly these days, building on. I've been here 23 years and they've been talking about it the entire time. This summer, working with the town of Wingate, the university closed and removed a one-block section of Camden Road, replacing it with a large pedestrian walkway with fountains and reflecting ponds, not just for beauty, but for safety. Every day, there's probably two to 3,000 students who walk back and forth this road, and cars would come through 30, 40 miles per hour uh, not paying attention. The project creates a more pedestrian-friendly campus. And there's more. A half a million dollar track and field complex is going in next to Irwin Belk Football Stadium on the north side of campus. Science labs are being put in at Bridges Hall in one of the oldest buildings at Wingate. And the bridge patio between the DPC Student Center and the Stigall Administration Building, the aging wood floor which had gone bad, has been ripped out, replaced with concrete and steel that uses smart technology. We've put in a, uh, an electrode system that during the winter at a certain temperature 
we won't have to worry about going out and scraping ice. Uh, now it'll just turn on and heat and, and no ice problems. And we only scratched the surface. Here are the numbers. This summer, they're tackling about 18 construction projects altogether. Price tag for the new dorm, a little more than $8 million. The Camden Road removal and landscaping, $700,000. Track and field complex, half a million dollars. For a complete list of all the construction projects, we have it on our website, wingate.edu slash go slash WUTV. While construction is going on pell-mell, summer school is in full swing. Two four-week sessions are going on at Wingate this summer, one in June and one in July. Students say it's a great chance to get ahead on their college career. 39 courses offered this summer, from sciences to languages and communication. And for students, it's a good deal. The cost considerably lower than during the fall and winter semesters. I love you. I do love you. 600 incoming freshmen are getting an up-close look at their new digs. Summer orientation is underway. Wingate rolled out the red carpet to students and their families, offering them a choice of six different days to check out the campus this summer. It's a chance for students to meet the Dean of Students and the Wingate Bulldog mascot. Find out about academic resources and get their pictures made for the student ID. Classes begin for the fall semester Tuesday, August 29th. When you think about summer, for many, summer camp comes to mind. For years now, Wingate University has hosted hundreds of summer camp programs. From May through August, the university will host an incredible number, some 10,000 people, adults and school kids, in groups like this soccer camp. Coordinators say it's an incredible opportunity for the university to pay it forward and to get a student to begin thinking, maybe this is where I should go. There are some days during the summer when our cafeteria is feeding almost double the number of people that they feed when uh, school is in session. One of the longest running camps here at Wingate is Passport, and Wingate Today contributing reporter Brian Stevenson is here with that. Brian? Well, Jeff, that's right. Passport has been coming to the Wingate campus for 16 years, and as we found out, their contributions reach far beyond the Wingate campus. The sound of hammers rang out in Marshville as Passport descended on this Habitat for Humanity build. Passport uses Wingate University as a home base in the summer. But the camp's impact is known throughout Union County. Minister to Students Dane Jordan has seen the impact over the years. I'm always amazed at how many people reference Passport and what they've done in the community. And so I always told the Passport people, you know, on behalf of our community, thank you for all the work that you've done in our community uh, because it's made a difference. A large focus of Passport is to do missions projects. This summer, students from 10 states will participate in the Habitat for Humanity Builds and other projects here in Union County. Passport is uh, all about empowering students and showing them that they can extend grace, uh, embrace their community, and encounter Christ through their service and their mission work today. And it's obvious these kids are getting the message. It didn't matter what they were asked to do. Some were inside this home sweeping and cleaning getting it ready for the next step in the construction process. Outside, a group was hammering away, building sheds that will be placed on the three homes under construction at this site. Camper Aggie Todd likes swinging a hammer. It's a fun way to beat out your aggression, but still be able to do something good with it. But all joking aside, this young lady loves the feeling she gets from coming to Passport each year. Pretty much on a Jesus high all week, and you can't really find it anywhere else and seeing the walls go up and progress being made for someone she may never meet is satisfaction enough for her. I think part of it is not knowing who you're helping. You just know that you're helping somebody and that's good enough. She may never know the person she helped, but no doubt the community will know who helped them. And for those running the camp, it's rewarding as well. To be able to pour into these students and show them what they can do is, uh, there's not a feeling like it in the world. And what a great group of young people, Jeff. They just uh, had such a great attitude, and no doubt they will leave their mark far beyond their visit here to Union County. 10,000 students and adults will visit the Wingate campus during the summer months. Passport just one of those groups. How long will they be here, and, and where are they staying? Well, they're staying here in the dormitories on campus, and each Passport group is here for about a week. And as we said earlier, they come from 10 states as far away as Mississippi. Brian Stevenson, thank you very much. This summer, more than 150 Wingate University students are trading in beaches and basking in the sun for a much more memorable experience, that of learning and education and culture. 
91 students are participating in winter national trips. That's the university's short-term study abroad program. They traveled to a half a dozen countries. 12 students are studying language immersion for three weeks in Costa Rica, and 20 members from the university singers and other choral groups participated in an international choir festival in Estonia, where they brought home top honors. With us now are two of the professors who led trips this summer, director of the university choir, Kenny Potter, and political science director, uh, political science professor, Joseph Ellis. Guys, thank you so much for being here with us. You me. both went to Estonia. You took groups to Estonia. How did this, how did this come about, Joseph? Uh, in graduate school, I did my dissertation research in the Baltics, uh, and Estonia was one of those places I was there. I fell in love with it then. And uh, when I came back, I started learning about this thing called the Singing Revolution, where basically they used song and, and choral groups to protest the Soviet Union. And so when I came to Wingate, I, I met Kenny, I had this idea that maybe we could take this joint venture to Estonia together. And, and while I took a international group and he took his course, uh, that dream became a reality. That's fantastic. And while there, Kenny, you all had, you participated in, in a choral competition. Tell us mm -hmm. about that. Uh, it was in the city of Parnu, and it was the Parnu International Choral Festival. And uh, there was a competition element to it, a folk song competition. And uh, there were Estonian choirs, uh, as well as a choir from Finland, and uh, as well as the United States. So uh, choirs from all over the world? Uh, yes. And you all took top honors? We did. We did. We actually tied uh, with a, a choir from Estonia. And I like to tell people, it's um, imagine taking a soccer team down to Brazil and, and winning. That's, that's essentially what it was like. What was what was like? What was that moment like in in, in performing and in the the ambiance and everything that was going on there? It was it was um, uh, breathtaking. It was it was very exciting because uh, there's a real is a great appreciation uh, for singing and everyone sings over there and uh, so the response was very warm, very genuine, and uh, we had a wonderful uh, cultural exchange. So you all participated in the competition. Did you do other things while you were there? Yes, we started uh, in Thailand and uh, spent several days uh, along with uh, the Winter National Group. And then we went down to Latvia and uh, uh, um, spent a few days in Riga, uh, the capital, and performed in a, a fantastic cathedral there. And then spent the rest of the time in Parnu, where we participated in the festival and did uh, additional concerts uh, with the Finnish choir. 20 singers, and while that's going on, there's studying also going on, Joseph. What were you all doing? Because it's part of the trip you hooked up with, with this. That's right. So we had a 10-day journey. They had about a 10-day journey also. And for two of the days, we overlapped. But for the other eight days, we were experiencing all uh, Estonia has to offer. We were in the city of Tartu, Tallinn, and also Parnu for a moment. Tartu is a university town, so uh, the students hung out uh, there. Uh, and then in Tallinn, uh, we did any number of things. We climbed to St. Olaf's Tower, which at one time was the tallest building in the world, had an overview of all of Tallinn. And we were fortunate enough to stumble upon a song festival that was going on. We met uh, the conductor of the Estonian National Opera there who puts on these song festivals. His name is Hirvo Serva, and that was a big honor for our students to meet him. And, and really, I think that uh, brought, it, brought it all home for our students. For so many Americans, they have no idea. You say Estonia, they don't know. I mean, is, where is that? What, what will you take away from this trip? I mean, this, was a, this was a former Soviet Republic mm -hmm. uh, that just recently, uh, as of about how many years ago? 20 years ago. 20 years ago, so not, not so recent, became its own country. And I imagine they, they kept that identity through all those years. They did. It's amazing. Estonia is a language that only about a million and a half people in the world speak. But through uh, those you know, 60 plus years of, of um, occupation, they were able to keep their language alive, their culture alive, their food heritage alive, their songs alive. And because they kept their songs alive, it went, uh, played a big role in destroying uh, that occupation. How, had any of the students who went with the two groups been abroad before? That, was, that, that had to be pretty eye-opening for a lot of students. Uh, a few of mine had, uh, but most had not, and certainly uh, not to any of the Baltic countries. S seven of my 18 had never been on a plane before. Amazing. 
Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in and, and sharing about the, the Winter National trip and the choirs. Congratulations on that honor. Kenny Potter and Joseph Ellis, thank you both very much. Thanks. Summer is usually the designated season for reading at the beach. If you're looking for a book to pick up this summer, join Wingate's reading program. It's known as WIRE, which stands for the Wingate Reading Experience. This year, students, faculty and staff as well, are reading the Connor Grennan book, Little Princes. It's the story of a man who travels to war-torn Nepal and takes on a mission of rescuing and reconnecting trafficked children with their families. The author, Connor Grennan, will be coming to campus this fall, meeting with students and hosting a lecture that's on September 11th. Coming up on Wingate today, a dream realized. A Wingate swimmer on his way to the Olympic Games. When I found out, I was so happy and proud of myself, and I just can't wait to start. We'll be right back. Ready to take your career to the next level? Then consider Wingate University's nationally accredited evening MBA program in downtown Matthews. This part-time program is ideal for working professionals with a real-world focused curriculum, as well as a unique one-semester prep course for non-business majors. Just a short drive from anywhere in Charlotte, Wingate University is accepting applications for the summer and fall semesters. Take your career to the next level. Visit mba.wingate.edu. With the nation's unemployment rate stuck at 8.2%, in North Carolina the jobless rate is about 9.5%, there's a lot of attention now on how higher education can help get the country working again. That was the focus of a recent discussion on the PBS program Carolina Business Review with Chris William. The half-hour show's special guest was Wingate University President Jerry McGee. You've heard the dialogue that we've been talking about, the K through 12 and the primary. When you look at the freshman classes over the last couple of years, the last five years, do you see that they are more prepared, less prepared, about the same? What are the challenges? I think at Wingate University, they are more prepared. Uh, I think that uh, the students who are graduating from high school who are motivated to, to look for a meaningful college experience, they know early on that they've got to really work hard and, and, and do their best. And so when they come to us, they're usually prepared to do the work. Uh, the, the people in higher education that I deal with worry more about the students that we never see. We worry about the ones who did not finish high school. The episode of Carolina Business Review featuring McGee aired in June on PBS affiliates in 22 media markets in North and South Carolina. He's a national champion swimmer, winning the NCAA Division II 400-meter individual medley two times running. And now he's making the biggest swim of his career. Marco Blavetsky, a Wingate University rising junior, and he's headed to the Olympic Games in London. It's been a dream of his since he first set foot into a pool, and now it's coming true. July 28th, Marco Blavetsky will be competing in the Olympics, swimming in the competitive 400 IM, and representing his home country of Macedonia. We spoke to him via Skype while he was training in Europe. What did you think when you heard the news that you were going to be selected? What did you think, Marco? Well, at the beginning, I was afraid. I was like, that's it, no Olympics. But when I found out, I was so happy and proud of myself. And I just can't wait to start and do the best as I can and represent Macedonia and Wingate University. Marco is the first Wingate swimming student athlete to qualify in sport's biggest prize. His swim coach, Kurt Sanaki, who recruited him heavily, says the coaching staff is elated at the opportunity Marco is getting. I am very proud. I think that uh, when, when I initially started the program back in uh, 2001, uh, the long-range goal was to aspire to have individuals that would come to Wingate University with the opportunity to participate. Marco will be competing along with 950 other swimmers in 34 different Olympic swim events in London. He has a message he wants to convey to his college family back home. I have to say thank you, first of all, to all my teammates at Wingate for helping me out at practices and also the coaches. And that everybody can succeed as long as they train hard. Wingate gives a great opportunity both academically and athletically as well. It's a nice environment to succeed in. Marco's not the only Wingate connection to these Olympic Games. Head track and field coach Joe Sunlin and his wife Nancy assisted with the U.S. Olympic track and field trials held this summer in Eugene, Oregon. Sunlin told us it was a great opportunity to work with one of the best championship meets in the world and a chance to see up close the athletes who will represent the United States at the London Olympics. 
With us now in the studio is the voice of Bulldog Sports, Ryan Brown. Ryan, some national attention coming to the football program. What's this about? Well, Jeff, some Division I football teams may take for granted their chance to be on national television every weekend, but in sometimes in Division II, it may never happen. Luckily for the Bulldogs, they'll get a shot coming up this fall. Halfley looking for help, trying to bide some time. Got a man! First down! And a touchdown! This was the icing on the cake in Wingate's 42-31 win over Tusculum in 2009, a game that was televised on a Thursday night in September on CBS Sports Network. The NCAA recently released the six-game national TV package for the 2012 season, and the Bulldogs once again found themselves on the slate September 27th at Carson Newman. Wingate head coach Joe Reich, who will begin season number 12 in the blue and gold, knows the excitement and publicity that comes from being on national television. This game uh, against Carson Newman, national TV game, I think it means a lot to the team just in terms of the excitement around the program. And you're always looking for something to fire up the team, fire up, just give them a little different feel, a little different look. Last time we played on national TV, a lot of, lot of feedback, a lot of positive feedback. Guys were all excited about it. Uh, it's just a different feel because you go to the game, you see the TV camera set up, you see the announcers on the field, you know, the sideline reporters, the guys taking questions before the game. And it's the, it's the first time that these guys have that, have that feel of, hey, this is a national TV game. It's a, it's, a, it's a big deal. Senior linebacker Robert Fletcher is one of three returning Bulldogs that started the 2009 television game and remembers being a true freshman in a life-changing night. I was a young guy, real young, but going into the game, the coaches never really told us how big the game was. We just knew it was another game. But when I got out there and I saw the lights and I saw the, the fans and I saw just the mist from the air and I just brought me to a whole different level. The chance to be on CBS Sports Network without a doubt is the highlight of the 2012 schedule, but the Bulldogs and Coach Reich have business to take care of before that late September night. Getting everybody in, working hard, conditioning test, everything that goes into to, to having a, a, a quality football program. We're thinking about all that stuff right now. You know, once we get through preseason camp, get a little bit better, then we focus on St. Aug. So let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's get there first. One last side note on Wingate's 2009 national television game. The Bulldogs played on CBS Sports Network in front of what was called a national audience, but really only reached a southeast region. This year's game will be on Comcast, DirecTV, Dish Network, and Time Warner Cable. It'll be a true national audience feeling, Jeff. A coast to coast coverage, and that's great. There has been a lot going on this summer in sports. Usually, in, in the Wingate Sports Department, the summertime is the re relief time, if you will, but with a President's Cup Award winner, the Excellence Cup on a conference stage, and then, of course, coaches on TV, coaches at the Olympics, players at the Olympics, and now the football team on national television. It's been a wild summer for Wingate. Ryan Brown, thank you very much. When it comes to sports, there's no denying the Charlotte area is one of the greatest sports regions in the country. The area is blessed with two major league sports teams, the Panthers and the Bobcats. Six minor league teams, the Charlotte Knights and Kannapolis Intimidators in baseball, Charlotte Checkers hockey, Charlotte Eagles and Lady Eagles soccer, Charlotte Hounds major league lacrosse, plus countless numbers of college and university sports teams, the Wingate University Bulldogs among them. Charlotte is home to the one and only NASCAR Hall of Fame, U.S. National Whitewater Center, and is by many accounts a motorsports mecca. And that doesn't take into account a world-class golf tournament, Olympic-type swimming events, college football championships, college and high school basketball tournaments. There is a lot going on here in sports. The Charlotte Regional Sports Commission is at the center of attracting sports to the region and promoting sports here. Jeff Beaver is the executive director. He joins us down Wingate today. Welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Wingate is a new corporate sponsor of the Charlotte Regional Sports Commission, and we're proud to be a member of that. What is it that you all do? Very simple. Uh, our mission is to improve the quality of life in the Charlotte region. And I'm, I'm, I emphasize region. We are a regional uh, organization. How do you do that through sports? You recruit events, you create events, you run events, you work with other sporting entities, a lot of which you mentioned, including the Wingate uh, Bulldogs, to make uh, things happen and provide for our uh, citizens things that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. And uh, it's, it's amazing how many different things we've done in my 13 years with the commission. And, and, and of course, it was all begun because of the uh, great job that the city of Charlotte did in the 1994 Men's Final Four. That's what 
gave birth to the Charlotte Sports Commission. That was, the, that was an amazing uh, tournament that year and, and, and has really just seen the city grow in, in sports. The, the Sports Commission, the Charlotte Regional Sports Commission, just within the last six months or so, commissioned a study on the impact of sports in the region. Tell us about that. Uh, we were nice enough and lucky enough to have Dr. John Connaughton uh, do, do the study for us. Um, it's fascinating to know that in 2011 alone, the economic impact of sports, professional, amateur, anything involved sports, was over a billion dollars. And that's billion with a B. It's very, very important. And, uh, our job at the Sports Commission is to make it fun, and uh, the, uh, the people that we work with, including Wingate, do such a great job of, of providing great venues, great facilities, and great teams and competitions that it, uh, it makes our job a lot easier. We mentioned some of the, uh, the great things that have happened in the region. What have you all been able to do in, in leveraging the, the, the effect that you have? Because you work with not only Wingate, but other universities and all the sports teams. Absolutely. Um, as, as much as people like to fish and hunt around here, uh, nobody realized that there was a professional uh, bass fishing league. And as a result, we hosted the Bassmaster Classic in 2004, and the rest is history. Uh, we've had uh, bass, uh, professional bass fishing uh, tournaments in Charlotte, in the Charlotte region since then, every year, sometimes more than one. So that's just an example of how these things can, uh, can build and, and, and come on. And, and the Sports Commission does, uh, we, we work with, for children's charities in some of the events we do. Uh, we do, a, uh, we do a, a, what we call a golden ticket raffle that lets people um, provide uh, by, by raffle tickets and if they're the lucky one that gets drawn they win roughly ten thousand dollars worth of sporting event tickets and this it's just something that we uh, think is unique and, and something that needs to be done in a, in a city like uh, in a region like Charlotte and Charlotte Mecklenburg. In, in the 30 seconds or so that we have I know it might be a hard task to do but what's coming up what's down the, what's down the pike? Well um, we're we're very excited we've got uh, among other things uh, uh, we're, we're hosting helping host the ACC football championship in the Belt Bowl that's at the end of the year. Um, the Chiquita Classic uh, uh, the new PGA golf tournament is going to be held down at the club at Longview uh, in September, we've got our own our own golf tournament that we do. Um, we do something that's a lot of fun that that people will be hearing about, and we do a uh, we do a, a Panthers uh, training camp trip for people that want to go down and see the Panthers work out. And it's we have a lot of fun. But those are just a, a smidgen of some of the things we're up to. Jeff, it's so nice to see you again, and I appreciate you stopping by. Jeff Beaver, the executive director of the Charlotte Regional Sports Commission. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Jeff. Thanks. Not a sport, but trying to make a connection. A former Wingate University soccer coach is bringing national attention to the university and the Monroe area in a TV reality show that's becoming a summer hit. Ben Clark, former assistant soccer coach and former player, is one of 14 men and women competing in the adventure dating series Love in the Wild. The TV show pairs up couples, forces them through exhausting challenges, and then by a process of elimination, kicks off two players each week all in the hopes of some contestants finding love. I'd never really used a machete before, but I was like a man possessed. I definitely chopped down far too many bananas. I don't know what 50 pounds worth of uh, bananas feels like. Clark, who's 27, from Chesterfield, England, now lives in Wingate, survived a number of weeks on the show. The series, set in the Dominican Republic, airs on NBC. Alumni and friends of Wingate University want to keep an eye out on their mailbox this summer. The Wingate Today magazine is off the press and arriving in homes in July. This summer edition features a cover with the familiar railroad tracks that run just beyond the entrance to campus. Featured articles include a profile of President McGee's 20th anniversary at Wingate, magnificent things are happening here, and a story about five professors retiring after almost 210 combined years of teaching, 156 of those at Wingate. He was a college football coach with stints at Wingate, Tennessee Tech, UNC Chapel Hill, and the NFL's Miami Dolphins. Now he's taking that know-how into the world of stock car racing. Coming up in August, here on Wingate Today, Chris Berkey, a Wingate alum from the class of 93, now the director of pit crew development for Hendrick Motorsports. Berkey coaches up-and-coming race car drivers and talks about his years at Wingate and how it prepared him for life in the fast lane. I learned a lot back at Wingate. Um, you know, I still talk to a bunch of people that I went to school with. Um, you know, but it's been a good, it's been a good transition from Wingate all the way through. You know, just kind of followed my dreams, man. Brian Stevenson profiles the Wingate alum in our alumni spotlight. That's on Wingate today in August. And that's our show for this time. I'm Jeff Atkinson. Thanks for watching. Comments, questions, 
contact us. Wingate Today is a production of WUTV and Wingate University's Department of Marketing and Communications.